Hey there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video we carry on with the Gorgon build and paint up the internal corridor. As I've already shown some of these steps in the previous video where I painted the driver cab, I'll skip over some details here just to focus on the newer techniques. If you want to see those in full, check out the video linked in the top right hand corner. At this stage I've painted up the internal area in white, basing it in Zandri dust like I had done before. You can also see I've done a hazard stripe just where the ramp closes. The hazard stripe was quite easy to make. I had based everything in Zandri dust, then I had masked off this area and painted the rest in the white scar. Once that had dried, I had then flipped the mask over just to reveal this section, which I then painted in Avalon Sunset. With the yellow dry, I added on a mask of Tamiya tape, which would then give me my hazard stripes. The tape itself is 3mm wide. I didn't have any tape that exact size, so I just cut some strips to that length. What I had done is I'd placed three pieces, so one on the yellow, one on the black, one on the yellow. I could then remove this black one, and it would mean the two yellow stripes were perfectly lined up. And I had just repeated that process. As you can see, I've also done a chipping effect. Now to do that, before I put the black down, I used some chipping fluid. This was the first time I've actually used it. Uh, it's from MIG. It's uh, the scratches effect, which is the slightly smaller one. They also do one for a heavy chip effect, but for something of this size, you only need the scratch effect one. Now all you need to do is spray that on with an airbrush, let it air dry, then you can spray on your Abaddon Black. And then once that had dried, I'd taken off the mask, then I'd applied some cold water just on the black areas, and then with a small dry brush, just lightly brushed away until some of the paint started to come away. For the larger piece, I've left on all the masking tape so you can see how it looks as I remove it. It's just a matter of carefully prying off the hazard stripes first of all. Now with the mask removed, all I need to do is add on some water. Now the black just needs a second to sort of soak in that water for the chipping effect to start to apply. And as you start to brush, some of that paint will start to come away. I'm going to be quite delicate at first, but then you can try a bit harder. And as you can see, some of it's starting to come away. Now the door closes on this sort of section here. That's the edge of the door and the outside. So that's the area I almost want the most weathering to come because that's where the door closes and potentially going to catch. So I want some of that yellow showing through. I'm then going to weather this again. So even the yellow is going to be slightly chipped with the sort of base metal color. But that's something I can worry about later. Now this section here is just on tape, so I don't need to worry about that. It's this little strip just here that I'm interested in chipping. I've also got a much stiffer dry brush which will allow me to create some effects as well. If I just bring it in to compare the other one, I obviously don't want to overly chip one side more than the other. I think they're pretty reasonable. So I'll just let that air dry and then I'll take off the rest of the tape. I've now taken off the mask on this one as well so you can see what it looks like up close. Uh, just bear in mind that this section here is still masking tape. It's only that much thinner area which is for actual hazard stripe. Uh, it looks really good on this side. You can see just in this corner, there's a bit of yellowing, which is where it's obviously bled through the mask and I obviously didn't tape that up very well. That will just need tidying up, but I can do that with my brush. And again, I just need to tidy up this little notch here that comes out. If you look on the other one, you can see I actually painted the hazard stripe on that one and I had actually masked that one up, so I kind of got that wrong. But what I want is for that hazard stripe to seamlessly blend in. So I think having this top part painted white would probably be the best. And that will give you a good transition between the hazard stripe and the white of the wall. 
So for the one on the left, I'll just paint the top of that notch white, leaving the corner bits, which is a bit where you could potentially catch your fingers in the hazard stripe. If you just compare the two side by side, you can see that I got the hazard stripes reasonably parallel to each other. There was no easy way to measure the angles, so I just had to do that by eye. Uh, the stripe here carries all the way along, but obviously this one will go in a different direction. The next step will be to paint all the interior detailing. I'll do this in the exact same way that I did the cab, so I won't go into too much detail on that, as the colour schemes will be exactly the same. Welcome back. As you can see, I've finished up painting this internal entrance. I've painted this in the exact same way that I painted the cabin. If anything, I'd probably weathered this more than I did the cabin, because it's going to be a well-worn area with lots of muddy boots, troops coming through, things are going to get pretty dirty quite quickly. I also really wanted to weather up those hazard stripes so they weren't so bright and clean looking. And you can see how the join looks between the sections that haven't been painted and have. So when that door is closed, that should make it really easy to paint up the external area without having to worry about the internal area. On this one, you can see where there's the little yellow triangle. I painted that up in the same colours as the hazard stripe yellow. And I tried to do a tiny lightning bolt as best I could to represent this grey block being a power box. I also painted up the cables in the same way as the cables in the driver cab and the red cylinder in the same way that the cylinder was painted in the driver's cab. This is just so there's a visual consistency between certain elements. So for example that might be some kind of canister or container of some kind and they're all going to be painted in the same way. There's a couple of extra areas where I've done tiny rust spots in red which you can just see up here and down on those pipes. Now for that I just used the orange rust weathering powder from Forge World, just mixing that with some white spirit before applying it on in a few areas. And here is the right hand side, you can see how I've painted up that has a stripe on the right hand side and then how I've joined it in with this block just here to have a thinner hazard stripe going up the side. You can see how I've painted up all of this inner lip here which should make it quite easy to mask out this section and then carry on painting this at a later stage. And then it will just be a matter of having a good transition between these two areas when I paint this section up. So I'll just show off the rest of the paint scheme. Again, you can see the odd little rust spot here and there that used the Forge World weathering powders. You can see a tiny bit of wet effect that I've applied just in this top recess. Uh, if I just move it around the light will pick it up and you can also just see it ever so slightly here. So I've applied that in a few places partly to test it out but also just to add some environmental weathering effects. To get that look I used MIG Ammo's Wet Effects. It's the first time I've used it and it looks pretty good. Another way you could achieve that effect is just to use some Ard Coat or Gloss Varnish. The other parts that I painted up was the floor for that internal entrance along with the inside of the ramp. As you can see, the external part where the masking tape was has been left unpainted. These two areas were painted in the same way as the cab floor. The only thing I haven't done is applied some weathering powders to muddy that up. I will apply that at the very end once the entire floor is painted, just to help give it a consistent look between these two sections. That's all for this video. In the next one, we assemble these pieces together and then we can start building the rest of the Gorgon. As always, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Feel free to drop me a comment below, and if you want to stay notified about the next video, make sure you're subscribed. Until the next time, take care.